Now, in this tutorial, we'll talk about configuration constructs. Sometimes we call it configuration objects. We'll be introducing tenants, bridge domain, application profile, EPGs, and many others. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the cloud and data center. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Now, before we talk about the configuration constructs and configuration objects, I forgot to tell you from the previous video that APIC okay, is connected to the leaves, only to the leaves. And so I can connect APIC1 to leaf1 and leaf2, and let's say APIC3 to leaf3 and the leaf4. I can do that. Okay, And um, the APIC, uh, as it connects to the leaves, the leaves will help discover other network devices. The other network devices it may discover are spines or other leaves that are not directly connected to our APIC, our controller. Now, the APIC, this is where we do the configuration and policies. Okay, and uh, before we talk about uh, the configuration, how we do the configure configuration, excuse me, um, I just want to highlight this. These two servers, the web and the database servers, these are bare metal servers. We're not going to talk about virtualized servers or virtual machines or virtual network. Not just yet. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I will create a block here. Okay, this is a block for what we call the tenant. Okay, now tenant probably the first object or configuration constructs that you're going to create. Okay, and we have three default tenants. We're going to talk about that in another video. Now, tenant, let me create a name. I will call this tenant as pod1. And tenant uh, is a grouping. And it can represent a customer, business unit, uh, or different groups. You can also create a specific tenant for testing or lab purposes. And it provides a um, profile space. And the idea is... You have a user that can only view or manage a specific tenant. And if you um, do that, this user will not be able to see or configure uh, other conf other co uh, objects uh, that is assigned to other tenants. Now, this is more of a security purposes uh, because configuration constructs or objects that is specific to a tenant, in this case, pod one, it cannot be used on other tenant, okay? It cannot be used on pod two, pod three, and so forth, okay? Now, under this tenant, we are going to add what we call networking configuration. So I will add here networking, okay? And under networking, we will add a few objects. So I will add the first object. The first object that I'm going to add is the verf. Okay, it stands for virtual router and forwarding. Now, this is no different than the verb we know from a layer three switch or to our routers. Okay, and what it does is uh, it's a layer three forwarding domain and uh, it creates one, well, actually creates multiple instances of a routing table, okay, or route, multiple routing instance. And we use this most of the time if, um, if we have a duplicate network or duplicate IP addresses, okay, and you can create one or more verf per tenant. Now, under verf, we have the bridge domain. Now, the bridge domain is a layer two forwarding domain and it provides a vault gateway and a subnet for endpoints. And uh, think about this as a container of networks, okay? So I can create a bridge domain and I can add networks. Um, Take note, a bridge domain is sometimes 
um, compared to VLANs okay, or networks, but not really because again, one bridge domain can have multiple networks. But in this example, we're going to apply one network per bridge domain. So I'm going to create our first bridge domain and I'm going to call this web BD. Okay, web BD. And this bridge domain we have here is for our web server. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an IP address, which also serve as the network and the default gateway. So this 192.168.10.1 um, slash 24. Okay, so as you can see, this is the same network of our web server. Then I'm going to create the second bridge domain. I'm going to call this DB, stands for database BD or bridge domain. And I'm going to add 192.168.20.1. Now take note, this is the default gateway. Okay, the default gateway for the web server and the database server. Next is, um, I'm going to create an application profile. Now, application profile is where we create our EPGs and con uh, contract. Okay, and uh, here's what we're going to do. This is the application profile, and I'm going to name our application profile simply application profile one. Now, this application profile, again, this holds our uh, EPGs and other policy objects and what I'm gonna do is I will just add our EPGs here so the first EPG that I'm gonna create is web EPG there you go again EPGs and contracts are added and configured under application profile and next will be our second EPG I will call this database EPG. There you go. Okay, now um, EPG stands for endpoint group. And this allows us to segment or, or separate um, groupings of endpoint devices. Okay, and uh, um, yeah, it is separation of uh, endpoint devices such as server, but this time is more granular. Okay, think about this as default. Uh, uh, we have a default security per uh, endpoint devices such as servers, and um, uh, we can also um, use policy in between. This is what we call contracts. Take note: an EPG belongs to a bridge domain. Okay, so what we're gonna do later is we're going to associate a bridge domain per EPG. Okay, and, and take note: there's only one bridge domain. Per EPG, um, for bridge domain, this is also attached to a VRF or to a VRF. Now, let's configure our EPG. First, our web EPG. Like what I mentioned, we attach an in, um Excuse me, this EPG web. We're gonna attach our bridge domain. Okay, so web BD. There you go. Okay, so this is the web BD. It is attached to our web EPG. Now, we are also going to attach our DB BD. Okay, so this is our DB BD. We are attaching it to our DB EPG. And uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I will add here EPG db epg and web epg just to make sure and you understand that these two boxes are epgs now based on our topology our web server is connected to the first leaf leaf one and i forgot to specify there should be an interface uh id here so let's use this is e5 and uh, leaf two is connected to database server via interface e4 there you go okay what else now in the uh, apic gui or even in the cli all of these switches the spines the leaves they have ids okay by default or the most common is 
the ID of the spines are 201, 202, etc. And the IDs of leaves, in our example, we'll just want, use 101, 102, and 103. There you go. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to apply or assign our servers to our EPGs. Let's first use the web server, okay, assign it to the web EPG. And here's how it works. And take note, we will be using bare metal servers. Okay, so in the GUI, um, I will show you in another video, we'll just have to drag and drop the bare metal server icon. Okay, and assuming that we did that, it would look like this. So we have a bare metal server connected to a web EPG. And we also have to specify um, the switch ID and the interface number using a static or, or static binding configuration. So in this case, it's switch 101, okay, switch 101 interface E5, okay. And uh, let's assume, let's say they are using VLAN 10, okay. We're going to explain um, the VLAN configuration and VLAN concept on of the ACI in other videos. Uh, let me just, okay, so there we go. Uh, switch 101 interface E5. Again, this is how we got it. E5 is the interface and the switch ID is switch 101. Now we're going to do the same in our database servers. This is our database server. And again, this is bare metal server. Now the leaf connected to our database server is switch ID 102, and it is connected to interface E4. Okay, and let's say this is VLAN 20. There you go. So this is how we configure our application profile. Now, here's the thing. Um, the web server and the database server, if you try to reach each other, it will be not successful. And why is that? Because the web server and the database servers are in two different EPGs. If we have two servers, for example, two web servers in the same EPG, by default, they can reach each other, okay? But this time it will not, okay? That's why we need to create another object, configuration object. And this is what we call the contracts. Okay. All right. Now, like what I mentioned, contracts are the policy uh, we define. And most of the time, these are connected to EPGs. Okay. So we have our, uh, <coughs> excuse me, contracts in between database and web EPG. And there are many policies that you can configure in our uh, contracts. But um, in this early stage of our discussion, we will just introduce what we call the filtering configuration. And this is very similar to ACL. So in this case, I will just allow ICMP and let's say TCP. 3306. Uh, TCP 3306, this is the traffic or the service or port of MySQL database. And here's what I'm going to do. I will uh, configure the contract as a provider contract on the side of database server. Okay. And then the side of the web EPG or the web server is what we call the consume contract. We're going to talk about what's the difference or contracts uh, configuration in detail on other videos. But uh, in this early stage of discussion, think about the provider contract is the destination. Okay. And in, if you look at our policy or filter configuration, we are allowing my SQL traffic. Okay, MySQL traffic, we are allowing MySQL traffic from the source, which is the web server to the destination database server. 
Now, don't be confused on the arrows, okay? Because the arrow here, okay, it's pointing toward the contract from the database server. This means the database EPG, not database server, the database EPG is providing uh, the policy or the filter to the contract to the web EPG, okay? So in short, this arrows here, this is the reverse of the actual direction because if you think about it, the direction would be web server wants to send request to the database server. Okay, so in this case, web EPG uh, to database EPG. Now, assuming everything is properly configured, okay, let's go back to our topology and see if this will be successful. If web server traffic will be successful reaching the database server. So let me clean this. Okay, let me clean this. I'm going to remove the connection in between APIC and leaves. So here's our scenario. The web server wants to reach the database server. So it should be sending traffic to the upstream switch. In this case, it's the leaf. And uh, what will happen here is your web server must have a default gateway configured. And that default gateway should be 192.168.10.1. Now, the 192.168.10.1 will be uh, available in the leaf one because that's the default gateway. There's no other way. It should be your web server sending to the default gateway 192.168.10.1 because the destination is a different subnet, 192.168.20.4. Um, okay, and whatever happens, it should look for a default gateway. Now, the leaf one, since this is the default gateway, um, it will accept the uh, the traffic and it will do this, okay? Uh, so it will receive it and then it will remove the, the header, whether it's VLAN, NVGRE, etc. And it will replace it by the VXLAN header. Now, it will send it to the destination. In this case, it's leaf two. Again, based on our previous discussion, it will replace the VXLAN header to the actual header of the connected endpoint, okay? Now, in this case, before it send it to the endpoint, the database server, um, the leaf2 also represents the default gateway, which is not 10, but 20.1. There you go. See that? 20.1. So the default gateway... 192.168.10.1 and 192.168.20.1, which we configured both as bridge domain, are now available or existing on both Leaf 1 and Leaf 2. Okay, And this helps us to move traffic. In this case, Leaf 2 can now forward the traffic to the database server. And also take note, as it moves, uh, to the fabric, okay, it will also check what traffics are allowed, okay, and this is defined with the use of our contract. And in our contract, we allowed ICMP and TCP 3306, which is the MySQL port. So that was just the very basic introduction of ACI configuration, and we create and edit those configurations in our APIC, yes, our controller. We're not done yet. Next, we'll talk about pervasive SVI, or sometimes we call it pervasive gateway.